Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, but also welcome back to me because I've been on a bit of an adventure. Last weekend I went to Warhammer Fest 2023, which was described by Warhammer community as the greatest Warhammer convention the world has ever seen. And despite the fact that I've attended tons of these events before as staff, it was the first time I've ever attended a Warhammer Fest as a customer and I kind of want to talk about it because it was definitely not what I was expecting. But before we get into all of that, let's take a look at what Warhammer Fest 2023 looked like for me. So firstly, I think it's really important for me to get this all out in the open. I paid myself personally for two three day standard tickets. I think they cost about £40 each, but um, I messed up a little bit. And because of that, I ended up getting an upgrade on my ticket. Let's talk about that. I was really, really keen to enter Golden Demon for the first time ever as a customer, but because I'm kind of scatterbrained, I think I left it a little bit late. And um, by the time I got to the website to order my tickets for Golden Demon, which was extra on top of your regular ticket, like you had to get your regular ticket. And then if you want to enter Golden Demon, it's an extra little price or something. By the time I got round to doing that, they had sold out or something. So I sheepishly emailed the Warhammer events team being like, oh, if you have any dropouts or if there's anything extra, let me know. And they were absolutely lovely. They sorted me out and they said, oh, there were a few dropouts. So here's some golden demon tickets and we'll even upgrade your ticket to premium entry for free. So that was a massive surprise and I'm really grateful that they did that. So so thank you very much to the Warhammer events team for being so accommodating of me and my mistakes. So this meant I had two extra tickets essentially to Warhammer Fest and I ended up giving one to my mum who we'll get into that later. She came to Warhammer Fest and she had a great time but it also meant I had a spare ticket going which I didn't manage to give to anyone else which is a shame. I wish I'd kind of maybe tried a bit harder because I'm sure someone out there would have loved that ticket so I guess sorry if you didn't get a chance to go to Warhammer Fest and I had a spare ticket. I feel a bit bad about that. So the tickets that I got comped were two premium tickets which would usually cost you about £70 per ticket and for that you get your three-day entry to all weekend of Warhammer Fest but you also get a little goodie box. So I've not opened mine yet because I thought we could do it on camera. I have a little idea of what you get in it but Let's open it now and do a little unboxing. Ooh. So my top down camera was too small, so we're just gonna do it on the floor. I've already opened it, but let's see what we got. Ooh, got a Warhammer Fest bottle. Already saw that. It's got some paper, I think, on the inside. That's pretty cool. We have the event exclusive miniatures. Nice commissar. And I think, yeah, the Slaves to Darkness guy. That's super cool. I like that one a lot. Yeah, that's sick. Sweet. Um, oh yes, good. Some destruction dice. Now I saw other people got different types of dice. So I'm quite glad I got these ones because they're the ones that I like. Yay. And then we've got some little tokens by the looks of it. Oh, and a badge. That's cool. I can paint that. Yay. And then I think this is the mouse mat. Yeah, little mouse mat. Little warped forge, hee <laughs> hee. Um, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And then is this gonna be my codex thing? Um, new. No, this is some things for Tacticus. Oh, first one to screenshot it gets the code. And then we've got warp forge again. Again, if you want it, screenshot. <laughs> and then we've got the rogue trader. Is it a card game? Well, either way, you're getting 15% off. Cool, that's what you get in your little box. Woo! I also, in my little bundle, got a t-shirt, which I don't have with me here. And unfortunately, by the time I picked up my little bundle, they only had larges to like four XLs left and that doesn't fit me. So those are just gonna be pajamas, which is fine anyway. And I think I was also supposed to get a free download of a codex of my choice. I didn't see that in my box just now, if that was like a little sheet of paper or something. Maybe I missed something, but I didn't see it. Um, I'm not really fussed about 
about that. I don't know if it's like an updated codex or or something like that. I'm not really too fast, but if you were and if you didn't get one in your box, I'm sure you could email the Warhammer event staff and they would sort you out absolutely no problem. So I know a big factor in deciding whether or not you want to go to things like this is always price. It's the same for me. I go to a lot of festivals. I, I go to a lot of gigs. I go to a lot of like music stuff and cons and things like this. And usually the price of the ticket is actually one of the smaller things that you spend money on. Usually the things that become expensive is stuff like accommodation, travel and food whilst you're there. Again, I think it's really important to be fully transparent about things like food expenses, travel and price in general when I'm talking about my enjoyment of the festival because obviously if everything was for free, I'm going to enjoy everything a lot more. But I really do think it's important to state that I was very lucky with my accommodation situation as well during Warhammer Fest. My friend Derek Erickson lives in central Manchester and his flat was empty that weekend so he dropped off the keys with us and we stayed there for free which was extremely lucky and I saved a lot of money doing that so thank you Derek Erickson. So what I ended up paying for was my two standard tickets costing £40 each, one of which I gave to my mum and the other one I had left over which again is a bit of a shame but my bad. And then travel to and around the event. Now I live in Nottingham and the event was in Manchester and travel isn't exactly cheap but at least it, it wasn't from like the USA or Canada or Europe like loads of people from Warhammer Fest were coming from all over the world to be there so much better than that. And the trip wasn't exactly what I would call cheap but again I was very very lucky with a lot of my situations concerning Warhammer Fest. So with all that financial preparation, tickety swag stuff out the way, let's have a look at how the event actually went. Okay, you excited? I don't know, I'm nervous. Do you not want to do the dance? <laughs> we got there on the first day, so the Saturday, around midday to one o'clock because we wanted to avoid any potential queues. And yes, we'll get back to the queues later. Well, firstly, it was big, like really big. Like that was my first impression going in was like, oh my God, it's huge. It was held in this venue in central Manchester, which I'd never been to before. It looked like an old railway station. It was definitely really impressive. Inside the venue was also extremely impressive and the events team had clearly gone ham on what I was calling the set design of the place. And I'd never seen anything like it at a Warhammer event before. There was like an impressive in-world entrance with some sick smoke effects, loads of 40k themed props everywhere, a big old terminator and just loads of cool lighting and music which really set the mood. It was damn impressive. Well done. After I'd walked around being a little bit bamboozled by the scale of everything, I went to enter Golden Demon. And I want to stress how like stoked I was to enter Golden Demon because it's the first year ever I've been allowed to enter like multiple different categories as a customer. I ended up entering my Rainbow Warrior into the 40k single category, my Voluptuous Ogre Lady into the Age of Sigmar single category, and of course my painted Golden Demon pin into the open category. And the pin itself is what you win if you're a Golden Demon finalist. So painting up and entering it into Golden Demon was a bit of fun and a great little project, which I personally was super proud of. And I'm going to be making a whole painting tutorial on that. So if you're excited to see how I did that, stay tuned. <laughs> After that, I was delighted to see that the Titan Owners Club was present at Fest. I remember the Titan Owners Club really fondly from my time working in the Specialist Design Studio, as they would always come up to the Forge World open days and previous Warhammer Fest to say hi to us and show us their incredible artistry on their Titans. This year, I was really delighted and super surprised because they had some big banners on display display and those banners were banners that I designed in Forge World like three or four years ago and they were really excited. They like grabbed me and they're like, oh Louise, we got your banners and I was like, oh this is incredible and that was so cool to see and it filled my heart with joy. So thank you so much guys for showing me that. It was great to see you. And then I just kind of walked around. It seemed like everyone and their mum, including my mum, was in the same place at the same time 
And I managed to meet loads of my friends in real life, from YouTube, from the internet, from the Warhammer community team. And that was just a really great experience. And I also got to meet a bunch of you guys, a bunch of people who since I'd left Games Workshop had subscribed to my channel or my Patreon and who just wanted to show a little bit of support for me. And there were even people wearing rogue hobby shirts, which was absolutely crazy. I couldn't believe that. I was too shy to talk to them. So if you came to say hi and show any support, then thank you so much. You really, really made my fest for me. And then on the Sunday, I went undercover and I joined in with the Warhammer cosplayers, which is like an absolute dream of mine because I adore them and they're always my favourite part of any Warhammer event. Alfhild Windrunner, both on Twitter and Instagram, reached out to me and was like, oh, I've got a spare sister of battle costume. Would you maybe like to try it on for Warhammer Fest? And I like lost my mind. I was like, absolutely, yes, let's do it, let's go. It was kind of a last minute thing, but I've been a fan of her stuff for years. She's incredible. So this was like a dream come true. If you want to follow her and her amazing cosplay work, then I'm going to pop some links to her stuff in the bio. I really recommend you do because she's incredible and she made this incredible costume and I'm just so grateful that she supported me and made my little cosplay dream come true so thank you. So I kitted up as a sister of battle and I joined in with the cosplay parade and I thought the parade would kind of just be like a few group photos or something but they pretty much brought the whole convention to a halt, split the venue down the middle and they had us all walk up slowly to dramatic music and it was like a big Warhammer wedding. I don't know how else to describe it. The other sister of battle cosplayers I was with really looked the part and they were really good at like having a solemn feeling face and posing and stuff and they look great and I don't think I was supposed to be like smiling the entire time but I was just having a really fun time so I ended up just cheesing it the entire event. Oh also this is where I found my mum and I don't think she expected me to be dressed up as a futuristic nun so I grabbed her to join in with like a few photographs and I think she was a little bit embarrassed but it probably serves her right for dressing me weird in the 90s so whatever. And then I kind of walked around a little bit more and I rounded up my Warhammer Fest experience by catching up with my mum and some old friends and some new friends and I left the event very tired on the Sunday evening with a big warm toasty feeling in my heart. But thinking about it, I don't think what I experienced at Warhammer Fest and what I did at Warhammer Fest was a normal Warhammer Fest experience. So let's talk about that. To answer everyone's first question, which is, did I enjoy Warhammer Fest 2023? The answer is yes, I absolutely did. I loved it and I had a great time, but I don't think I did what I was supposed to do to enjoy Warhammer Fest 2023. Let me explain. Here is a map of Warhammer Fest with all the things that you could do. And here's a map of what I actually ended up doing. And that's pretty crazy, right? One of the things that put me off getting involved with some of the more fun things that I would have liked to get involved with, like the paint and take table, which is usually like my favorite thing to do at Warhammer Fests, or attending the preview shows, or even trying out a round of the new 40K was all of the cues. <laughs> And I'm sure that the people who did end up waiting up to four hours, yes, four hours, for some of these activities will have way more to say on the subject of spending a lot of the time at Warhammer Fest queuing. But yeah, there were queues for pretty much everything. And as someone who's worked multiple Warhammer Fests, Games Expos, and Warhammer events in general, I can honestly say I've never seen anything like it before. It took me like a day before I even knew where my miniatures were in the Golden Demon cabinet because you couldn't get close enough to see the cabinets. But I was there for two days and I didn't wait in any queues, partially because I didn't want to, and also because I was busy doing not so common Warhammer Fest stuff, like cosplaying. But that also meant I didn't get to experience some of the stuff I think I would have really liked to experience. A lot of the time when you go to Warhammer Fests or Comic Cons or anything like that, you have a lot of downtime after you've been excited and saw a load of things. So you, you like to sit down and try a game or you like to sit down and just spend an hour painting a miniature. And I would really have liked to have done that as well. 
And I've done a bit of thinking because of course my experience of Fest wasn't a common one, but if I was just someone who had spent so much money on a ticket, traveled from far away, spent money on accommodation, and maybe coming to Fest is a once in a lifetime opportunity and you're so excited to do it, I would be desperate to get stuck into the things that were advertised as, as being the fun things to do at Warhammer Fest. I would, I would wanna do everything. I'd have my little checklist. I'd wanna like play a game of 40K and paint a minute and do all the things which were advertised as being the fun things to do at Fest, right? And I think that personally, I may have been a little bit upset as a customer that I had to spend four to eight, maybe more hours of my valuable Fest time waiting in the British Q simulator. But I didn't, so I don't know. But, oh, I did end up missing out on the Squigapult experience though. I got some footage of it and that's maybe the one thing I'm upset that I didn't get to do because it looked really cute and fun. I just wanted to steal a squig though. Give me a squig. I think it's also important to note that I didn't participate in any of the demonstrations or masterclasses, which cost a little bit extra on top of your regular ticket price, but they were run by Lizzie and Emma and people from the YouTube painting team. So I bet they were absolutely great and well worth the money. And it was really lovely to bump into Emma and Lizzie for a small amount of time and see them exhausted, rightfully so, but flourishing and just really happy to be invited to an event. Actually, whilst we're here, here, let's just take a minute to just say a huge well done to all of the floor staff that worked at Warhammer Fest because it was insane. They were there for like 12 hours a day, three days in a row, working their little butts off to give us like the best event that they could. I bumped into Ben from Battle Report, my friend from Warhammer Plus a few times, and he was running the 40k demo tables, which were like the most insanely busy part of the whole fest. And even though he was on his break and he had bumped into me and I was like, oh, hey, how's it going, Ben? He never stopped smiling. And I saw him a few times at the demo tables over the weekend and he was just giving giving it 110% the entire time. And I can't imagine how exhausted he must be, but he never turned it off because he just wanted everyone to have a great time. So just, I just wanna say, a huge well done to everyone who worked at Fest. And if you're thinking about maybe directing some criticism or even hate towards anyone that worked the event, please don't because it's not their fault if things were potentially mismanaged and they deserve all the best and I wish them that. So thank you so much guys. Which brings me on to my next big point, which is that I think both me and a lot of people present at Warhammer Fest just sort of miss seeing the studio staff. I mentioned this in one of my previous videos where I talked about how much I enjoyed working Warhammer Fests back in the day. And I mentioned that I think the new format of having no creators to talk to will kind of lessen the experience of getting to know the world of Warhammer and the people who make the thing we love. And unfortunately, I think I was right. I met a few people who were like, oh, is X gonna be here? Or I haven't seen Y, do you know where he is? Cause I, I wanna talk to them about this miniature I've been painting or get some advice or just like talk to them about what they're doing right now. And it was kind of sad to kind of go, nope, they're not gonna be here. And to see them just be a little bit disappointed that they couldn't talk to their favorite writer, artist or creator in general because they weren't there. So since I didn't have a common user experience of Warhammer Fest, I decided to pop onto my Instagram and make a little poll to kind of gauge how people felt about the event. And the results were really interesting. So first I made the standard, did you enjoy Warhammer Fest poll? And very few people, in fact, less than a hundred, straight up said that they did not enjoy their experience. So that's fantastic. But the rest of the people who voted seemed to either really enjoy their time there or enjoyed the vibe, but sort of wished there was more to do. When I asked what they'd want to change, if anything, most of the answers were pretty much a 50-50 split between, I wish there were less cues, better organization, and more to do and people that were just saying I wish the studio staff were there to talk to and I wish I got to meet the people behind Warhammer. So what would I change about Warhammer Fest? Well here is my suggested Warhammer Fest map. 
It's probably absolutely ridiculous and it's missing loads of stuff, but I did my best and I'm optimistic, so sh don't judge me. You can see that a huge portion of the room is still dedicated to Warhammer 40k, as it should be given that we're all excited for the new edition and we're excited to know more about it, so I've added even more tables and more space to get around them. But there's also an Age of Sigmar section with a few demo tables and a specialist design studio booth where you can play some fun Blood Bowl games and there's also somewhere where you can learn loads about the old world which we're all so excited for too. But maybe most importantly what I've added into the corner is the design studio booth and some black library tables too where you can talk to the designers and creators and illustrators behind Warhammer and really engage with the worlds of Warhammer just a little bit more thoroughly. Also, I think that instead of like longer reveal shows, I would be tempted to run a few seminars like an old world one where you get a Q&A with some of the people that are working on old world and 40k and, and just things like that. I think that would add a lot to the experience. So look at this map of Warhammer Fest 2018. I personally remember this fest really fondly and I think it had it all over three floors. It was massive. There was room for people to wander around aimlessly and there was large spaces full of loads of different things that people could sit and enjoy or interact with directly. So in my Fantasy Fest map, I really didn't want to get rid of all the licensed and games people and stuff because I love them and I think they add loads to the Warhammer Fest experience. I just didn't have room to put them in. So I guess the conclusion of my Fantasy Fest map is that we need a bigger venue and I'm optimistic, but my point remains. I think what would have made this fest fantastic is just to give the customers more of an opportunity to do more and engage more with the things that they love about Warhammer, be that through more demo tables, a wider variety of game systems to play, or just creators which they could talk to about the thing that they love. I also feel that like not having the presence of other gaming systems in Warhammer at Warhammer Fest was like a massive missed marketing opportunity on behalf half a games workshop. So imagine you're waiting in the queue to play 40k and you're a bit bored. So what do you do? Oh, well, there's a Necromunda gaming table. Let's just kill some time there until the queue goes down. It's fine. So you go to the Necromunda table, you have a game of Necromunda and oh, you discover that you love Necromunda and then you go have a game of Age of Sigmar and maybe you love that too. So you come out of Warhammer Fest, a fan of three gaming systems and Games Workshop gets to sell you more miniatures and everyone's happy. I don't know. It seems obvious to me. <laughs> so what are my final thoughts on Warhammer Fest? I came out of Warhammer Fest 2023 as happy as can be, but not because I had a great time playing a 40k demo or I painted a miniature or I test played some of the new games coming out. It was because Warhammer Fest attracted all of the best people and those people are just people from the Warhammer community and my mum. I got to spend time ogling some of the most incredible miniatures I've ever seen painted by people from all around the world and I got to join in with the cosplayers who had spent hours and hours on their craft and who got to present it to an adoring audience. I got to see my friends from all over the world in one place and that was incredible and the vibe of all these people who were just so excited to have a place where they could get together and be passionate about the thing that they loved was great. So I guess I'm grateful to Warhammer Fest for giving these people a space where they could do that. Just maybe less cues next time. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, thank you for being rogues and I'll see you at the next Warhammer Fest. Bye!